Previously on Hard Earned. Last week, my total income was less than $300. You know, I live off my credit cards when I don't make enough money. How do you feel about the house? Scared. Why is that? Big purchase. This is a fresh relationship. I mean, uh, it doesn't take two cents to know that you don't buy a house with somebody. But we need this house. Right now, we're living paycheck to paycheck. But my boyfriend at home, you know, we, we're a team. We meet Hilton and Diana, who live in a garage in a trailer park and survive on the wages of a cafeteria worker. Working hard to feed this hunger. Whoa. Suffer through the ice cold winter to the heat of the summer. Tell me what I got to do to earn a meal. Standing on the picket line, still waiting for a deal. Head downtown looking for a job, if that's what you call it. Down on my hands and knees in the bathroom stall, scraping out a toilet. An honest living is hard earned, but I know there's hope for me. Praying for a change to come one day, saying, God, can you please give me some? Son las cinco con seis minutos. Es mi primo, el primo de mi novia, Pedro. Está dormido ahorita. Hilton Kennedy and his girlfriend Diana pay $300 a month to live in a shared garage in a Silicon Valley trailer park. Mi papá es Hilton Ray Kennedy Jr. Y mi abuelo es Hilton Ray Kennedy. Son americanos. Sí sabía que era un poco fuera de lo común de los nombres, ¿no? Y dado más en México, de, oh, pues, ¿quién eres, no? El presidente, ¿o qué? Hilton was born in the U.S., but was raised in Mexico by his mother. He is a U.S. citizen, so he can legally work here, but not in Mexico. La situación es muy difícil en Tijuana. Sí, en Estados Unidos estoy obteniendo la oportunidad de hacer algo más. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Apenas solo tengo 10 meses trabajando para la compañía que es Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit eh, tiene el contrato con, con Google. Es por eso que trabajo en las instalaciones de Google. Fui a hacer este entrenamiento para Dishwasher. Llegué y no puse mucha atención porque era todo raro. Googleplex here is designed to make life for people not only as productive as possible, but also as pleasant as possible. So the Google 15 is the 15 pounds that you gain with all the amazing free snacks and organic food that they provide for us. There are always plenty of opportunities to work it off. Cuando llego, Estaban construyendo una alberca. Entonces decía yo, ¿por qué una alberca? Tenemos que ser a uh, googly con los googlers. Nosotros también comemos en una cafetería, pero pues simplemente son ellos primero. Entonces, si ellos están tomando comida, pues, pues pásale tú, no. Yo me quedo aquí esperando, tú ve adelante tienen prioridad ante nosotros. Entré a Google ganando 11 dólares la hora. Mi cheque a la quincena viene saliendo como 730, 740 dólares. Voy a ir al aeropuerto a recoger a mi novia después de dos semanas que no la veo y me compré un peluche. Creo que es un poco más grande que ella. <ríe> Déjame esconder esto. Que no lo vea. 
llegue. Hilton's girlfriend, Diana, is returning from a two-week trip to Mexico where she visited her family. Mucho tráfico. Whoa, be careful. Hilton rarely drives, but borrows his friend's car to get to the airport. Printing ticket, please wait. Okay. Remove ticket. No problem. Voy a cumplir apenas cuatro meses. No sé si quería reírse, quería llorar, no, en realidad no, pero. No me creía, pues, de que me abrazaba y que no creía y que, ay, ¿en serio? Que no, ay, no es cierto. Y así, pues, de, mm, o sea, es que él ya tenía ganas de ser papá. Ya casi cuando me iba a venir, faltando unos dos días, me hizo un ultrasonido. Todavía no me creo que vamos a hacer que me pasó. Dos. Yo tampoco. Dime, tuviste que dar noticia de allá. ¿Por qué me hizo la Porque tu mamá te la quería sabes? dar, le dije, wow. no, le dije las dos o ni una. Ya. Amor, estaba comiendo, se me estaba atorando el pan en la garganta. Y me dijo... No podía creer, me dijo, estaba no, así, me dijo, es que le tienes que decir. Para pues que no duermas tanto. <risa> Tú los tienes que cuidar, amor. Pues para decir, oye, si mi esposo bonito. trabaja todo el día, pues yo me voy a hacer cargo de ellos para que, pues, simplemente pueda dormir un poco más. Y que, bueno, si no duermo, al día siguiente voy bien, bien jodido. No voy a poder trabajar. Entonces, ¿cómo voy a traer el pan de cada Por eso día? me tengo que... ¿O quieres trabajar? Dime. Yo no nací para trabajar. Estos están muy bonitos, ¿verdad? ¿Quieres que prenda el calentón? Vienen aquí a Estados Unidos para poder tener lo mejor posible para mi familia. Emilia Stancotti is a first-generation American. Her father and mother immigrated from Italy when Emilia was a child. Tonight, she and her sisters gather for Sunday dinner. Did it get really dry? Ciao, Papa. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Okay, hello, I'm going to make you this. My dad and I didn't get along when I was young, and we certainly don't get along now. I think it's because we're a lot alike, so we butt heads a lot. And I watch the soccer. I go make him. Keep your guard, G. My parents made a decision based on what they thought was the best thing for us. But I did not adjust um, to this country at all. And I think it affected probably the next 20 years of my life. That's my grid. That's the house that we moved in when we moved from Italy, right here. My grandfather, my grandmother, my mom, my dad, myself, and my sister, we all lived in this little house. I, I did not want to be here. They told us that it was for a better life, you know, but they didn't give us a choice. This is where we're going, and I remember at the airport that day, there was so many people, so many people, kids we went to school with, um, that, you know, came there and, you know, the tears, the crying, because they knew they would, they would probably never see us again. This is my mom in Italy. Oh, 
my gosh. These are more. These are all in Italy for sure. Every one of these. She's on the phone here, riding a horse. That was a real happy time for her. She's only been back once. And this is her last day of school, walking home with her sister, Danielle. Last day of school in Italy before they came here. I think one of the things that I always, um, I wonder if my life would have been different there. You know, um, if we wouldn't have came here, you know, would I have struggled with drugs all those years? Um, you know, would I be 50 and broke and um, not really have uh, much of a future? But who do you blame? You know, there's nobody to blame. I made choices, and uh, I live with the consequences every day of the choices that I made. I had opportunities to go to college and to, to do other things, but, uh, you know, my drug addiction and alcoholism got in the way of that. I think in the beginning of her, when she first moved here, she, you know, had a hard time figuring out how she was going to fit in. She was so different from all the other kids. So she kind of drifted towards troublemakers who didn't care who she was or where she came from, you know, as long as she was willing to party with them. I, I did see her hit rock bottom. I seen her so emaciated you wouldn't even recognize her. She would disappear for days. She's stolen my car. She's left me stranded places. The reason I stuck by her is because on the days when she was clean, I could see that there was this person, this other Amelia, this good person. And by the time I got sober, I was almost 30, and uh, I came home to a daughter, and I had to play mom. It's hard to talk about her. Uh, she went through a lot. Most kids should never even hear about the things that she's had to live. And um, her father has been in and out of prison for years and never got child support. Um, I dropped her off at my parents' house when she was six months old. And um, I came back permanently when she was six years old. I didn't know what her favorite food was. Sunday school starts at 9, so everybody needs to get a move on. DJ Jackson, his girlfriend, Takeda Akins, and their kids have lived with DJ's mother in a nearby suburb ever since their apartment in the city was burglarized. They're trying to save money to rent in a neighborhood safer than their last one. It was a, a huge blow when they came in our house and took all our stuff. Us moving here to start all over again. Go have a seat. It's not like it's a bother being in my mom's. Yeah. My mom doesn't care. But being a man and can't put my family in a home that they deserve, that's a problem for me. I need them to have their own space. This two bedroom is home to his mom, sister, sister in law, two dogs, and a cockatoo. Go in. Go. Okay, or not. My mother passed away, so I inherited her dog and her bird. He's not good with other animals. Do 
DJ, you got on the hot water? We got all this different music going on. We're going to be up out of here. Bad 9 o'clock. Everybody, they waiting on you to get out the bathroom. We ain't moving no more. I'm in this bathroom. I'm waiting. You turn it around, What? Turn it around, I turn my music down. Too many women in the house. Everybody requires the bathroom. Everyone requires the bathroom. Keita? You got five minutes. You guys gonna be on the train. I mean, you got nine girls in the house. What do you expect? Man? What you mean nine? Nine girls, not nine girls in this That's house. We need to go. Jesus Christ. People gonna get left. I want y'all to go sit down. You put the socks on? Yep. Okay. Go sit down. Hey, on the couch. Sit down. Don't get wrinkled at all. It's now after nine o'clock. Hey, gonna be on the train. I'm not kidding. I, all right, ma. Okay. DJ's mother, Chantel, has inherited a car from her mother, but she's doubtful she can make the payments. Her family enjoys the break from public transportation. My question is, is what do you believe? What the world tells you is true? What God tells you is true? The next question is, do your lifestyle show? That's the, that's the question. Yes, ma'am. I, I think that sometimes people live their life any kind of way, and then if they on their sick bed, then they get an opportunity for God to save them at that last possible minute. They say, Lord, forgive me. Nobody knows if they can get saved in that brief amount of time. Nobody knows that. So why live your life all funky? and think that, you know, okay, you're gonna have, a, you're gonna have time at that last minute. Yes, that is like playing Russian roulette. I don't know where I would be if I didn't have a foundation of my mom and God in my life. I'd probably been dead a long time ago. Uh, cash, cash me. I'm not giving you no money. See, you, ch you, you give your children money, you lend them money, and they never, pay you back. Yeah. Never. I don't have no 10, do I? Never pay you back. Get handed over. I don't over. have no 10, Well, though. you better go in church and get changed for a 20 then. All I'm right, I got something. you. Yep. I need to tip somebody. Uncle B. Never pay you back. Never. You got a, you got two 10s? Brother Cheney, you got two 10s? Something going to take it from you. Uh -huh. Right. Well, well, you, you better not pull up your damn 10. Well, you better not do it. I'm grateful. Even though he's his own man, he still respects me as his mother, and I, you know, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. I love you. Love you See you later. When Dijon was born, he, he was a rascal. He was really little. And then he got really fat, turned into a little Buddha. I was a very responsible person really early on, so everybody was kind of surprised I <laughs> had a child at 19. I was working at Walgreens while I was in high school, and when I had Dijon, where I went, Dijon went. I'm strapping him to the front and a bag on the back, and I'm gone, and, and that's how I was. I, I just wanted to make sure that my children were better than I was in just about everything. I didn't really play with my kids. <laughs> I really didn't. My whole thing was, you know, we would watch educational movies and stuff. I didn't do that hope, hide and go seek in the house and all of that business. I worked a lot. I did two tours in Iraq when I came back. I couldn't find a job anywhere. I was just messed up. I don't know. I didn't know why I couldn't find a job.
Jose Marino recently found a job at a court reporting agency. He works the 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. shift. It's pretty tough, but it worked. It's paying the bills, so I'm definitely not complaining. But a lot of people are just lazy and don't want to work, I know, man. No, you know? Yes, no, I've seen it. Yeah. There's work everywhere, <laughs> things that they don't want to work. <laughs> if I didn't have a job, I would work at McDonald's and work myself up. Some people don't want to work, and if some I people aren't qualified. Yeah, yeah, some I people are overqualified. Over a lot of people are overqualified. Yeah. I've heard of that. You know, sometimes people can't get the job. That's right. Exactly. That's another thing. Because that's even when I came back from my rack the first time, I couldn't. I was doing job interviews, and I couldn't get anything. And then you end up going through the money you save. When I graduated college, it was 09. Then I moved to California, and it was terrible. There, I mean, the job market was... I would go in for interviews, and the guy interviewing me, or, or woman interviewing me, would have, like, a stack of resumes this time. And it was just like, I mean, how do you even make yourself stand out to that? Yeah, like, I walked into an interview, and there was 20 other people waiting in line. And not only did we have the interview, but we had to also write an essay after the interview. Oh, man, I got the job, too. Got an email. Hello, I will be processing your loan. Below is a list of items needed. And she's asking for 14 things. Wow. Jose and his girlfriend, Elizabeth Bonta, put an offer in on a house. As first time home buyers, they're struggling to get their subsidized mortgage approved. Number one, please provide the most current pay stubs for Jose, including all employers. Please provide a written, signed explanation for the year to date overdrafts. Overdrafts? totaling $140. For who? Oops, me. Please provide a written signed explanation for the following late charges, Jose. One 30-day late on um, March 2012, Bank of America. Because of the, um, I was on the e-bill. Thanks, have a great day. Wow, it's a lot of stuff. I know. Um, getting more and more scared with the financial disclosures. I mean, this could affect us substantially. See, I thought if you can afford the payments, you can afford it. And hence why a lot of people have foreclosed homes. A lot of reason why people have foreclosed homes is because loan officers were approving loans that buyers couldn't make. You know, in our instance, they say, oh, you qualify for a $300,000 home. Do we really qualify for a $300,000 home? No, I don't think no, so. No, we don't. Jose, we could potentially lose the house. With ham. Which one quesadilla? I'm not really sure. So she don't like. I have it. It's quesadillas right here. Yeah. Okay. okay. The last time she ordered quesadilla with ham. Aquí está la columna. Aquí está la cabeza. Yo no veo nada. Una señora me hizo la prueba, amor. Y me dice, me salía que era niña. Y un niño estaba llorando, llorando. Y fue y me abrazó. Y me dice, ves, me dice son niñas. ¿Cuánto fue más? 26. ¿16? 26. Oh, ah, pago la renta, pago mis pasajes. Pago la comida de mi novia. El bill de mi celular. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Hablo español? Sí. ¿Esto es tu pago de...? De 94, ¿verdad? Sí. Ok, perfecto. Muchas gracias. Buen día. Ahora necesito un carro para con Diana poder mover al doctor. Tener que pagar un doctor. Quiero buscar un lugar mejor para vivir. Voy a hacer un video de dinero a, a México. Okay. ¿Y cuánto le quieres mandar? 100 dólares. 100 dólares. Ok. Le envío dinero a mi mamá cada mes. 
¿Cuánto va a ser el total? El total serían 108 dólares. ¿Ocho? Cuando vi en Tijuana, no tenía trabajo allá. Hilton is a U.S. citizen and cannot legally work in Mexico. No aportaba económicamente. Mis papás pueden decir que me corrieron de la casa. Entonces, mmm, mi novia y su, ma su mamá me dieron asilo en su casa. Y ellos fueron quienes me ayudaron a venir aquí. Yo quiero uno, uno color. Así de esto será. Pedí prestado a la hermana de, de la mamá de mi novia. Y junté el dinero para pagar el dinero que me habían prestado. Obtuve mi segundo trabajo, que es este Tomeros. Ahorita estoy libre de deudas, puedo empezar a ahorrar. horas a 90 horas por semana. Es más cansancio. No me quiero four hours sleep. Get Aiden ready for school. Daddy, can you show me this picture again? Baby boy. I used to get hurt just like you. But you never cried. Oh, I did. That's basic training. You look like that anymore. You're not going to war. You're going to go to school, so you don't have to go to war. Yay. When he was 24 years old, Jose joined the National Guard. He did two tours in Iraq. When I signed up, it wasn't financial. It was, I wasn't really doing anything. I would spend time with my friends, go out, drink, smoke weed. What's different? The military's different. By 2005, we had got our orders to go to Iraq. And I'm looking around, and it's like, it's a, it's a good chance someone's not gonna make it back. So I was like, supply specialist. They say you're in charge from beans to bullets. The missions we were on, they were doing convoy security for trucks that were hauling equipment from one base to another. Three people were killed Monday a convoy carrying coalition forces struck a roadside bomb in Fallujah. Suicide bombings over the last two And we were checking houses outside the perimeter and um, just looking for weapons, things to use for IEDs. Four American soldiers were killed in Iraq. Came back home, trying to get readjusted. It was very difficult. The nights of not being able to sleep, the struggles emotionally I've been through, seeing things that messed me up inside. I'm colder. Going into the second appointment, I got married because my, my ex-wife was pregnant. That's when you were born. He was a year old when I came back. So I missed the whole first year. Came back, and then my relationship with my ex-wife started to deteriorate. Did you change his diaper? Is that too much to ask? What do you think, Papa? I could change his diaper, right? She started drinking a lot more. She denied it. She'd be drunk playing with Aiden. The neighbors upstairs would tell us stories about, you know, what they would hear down here. She left Aiden and he was crying, whatever. It hurt my mom. So I just left. I went to my mother's house, took Aiden with me. Filed through for divorce. He lives with me. Right now, I don't know where she is. She calls sometimes, but 
I don't know. I don't know what to tell him. That's your grandfather. You know, I kind of been in that situation. And my father, he left. But you feel you don't have nobody there. You know, where is the guy that's supposed to make me to a man? Aiden, he used to have an issue of where, you know, he didn't want to see me go. He'd be like, well, where are we going right now? Whose house is we going to? You have to go to work? When are you coming back? I want a yard for Aiden so he can run around for him to be stable. Buying a house, it's a big purchase. But if I can't afford it, but I want Aiden to have a home. Before his shift at Walgreens, DJ stops by the union office to use a computer. Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, mom, I'll put you on speaker. All right. Ma. Uh, you Hold on one second. I'm logging in now. He calls me at work, and he's like, you know, mom, can you post my resume or do an application for me. All right, I'm in there. It says applications and process is not submitted. Because he doesn't have the internet yeah. and computer and stuff at home. Do you still need me to stay on phone? Yes, I do. Hold on a second, mother. I don't even have a computer here, but, you know, on my lunch or I, I arrive work um, around 45 minutes early, so he knows when to catch me. So you even filled out the high school diploma and all of that stuff? I don't think you um, emailed it to me, ma. Email you what? My resume. I don't think you uploaded it. Oh, yes, you did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If he could go back to school and actually finish, he'll have a halfway decent chance to, you know, do what he needs to do for his family. He can't get any financial aid right now. If he wants to go to school, he'll be paying for his classes and books and all of that. He can't do that on a Walgreens salary. I have to do just, I guess, call me later. All right, ma. I love you. Love you too, ma. This particular position is for a train crew, cleaning the trains and like fixing the track. It's a labor job, but you know, uh, way more benefits, a lot more pay. Um, they start you off anywhere between 19 and 20 and 23 and up, you know, so it's definitely good money. I'll give it maybe two weeks and then Google the human resources, initiate contact first. Um, you're definitely going to know my name because I'm going to irritate all of you guys continuing to call and checking the status of it. He has two strikes against him already. He's black and he's a male. He, he wants to work, he wants a better life for his kids, but it's gonna be really hard for him. Welcome to life. I seriously considered staying at home today. But, I mean, it could be worse. Could be better. <laughs> but it could definitely be worse, so. Last I looked, it was negative 11 with the windshield of negative 45, I think. So it's a really rough day to be out. Oh, about four minutes to go. Chantel's daily commute is an hour and 10 minutes each way. She had to give up her mother's car after a title transfer led to an expensive refinance. She works in technical support at an educational software company. 
I've had a job since I was 15 years old. Working at daycare, Burger King, McDonald's, you know. I love what I do. I've been with my company for 19 years. And the question was asked, do I feel valued for my loyalty? And it's sad to say I don't. What hospital do you work at out here? Well, we, I work at Wesley. Oh, she killed. OK, so you leave from one job to go to another then job. Then I go there. Oh, no, I can't, I can't do that. Two no. jobs, I did that for a little while. I can't do two jobs. Well, I ain't working just for that. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you have to do what you have to do for your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Okay. Well, it's not like I had to come today. We have vacation days. I could have stayed at home, but I, I like to save my days for, you know, if something really bad happens, like when my mother got sick having to go to doctor's appointments and things like that. My mother passed in November. Miss her a lot. I think I wanted her to say that I'd be fine. But she didn't get to do that. I think that my mom instilled a lot in us. Oh, my God. See you guys tomorrow. We don't ask people for help. I don't think it's a pride thing, but I think it's a exhaust yourself first before you ask someone else to do something for you. Work hard. Do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And it would just be nice if all of the hard work that you put in, the pride that you take in what you do, that you feel valued for it. Here's my third step prayer. I say that every morning. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thy will. May I do thy will always. I live on prayer because that's all I have. I don't have anything else. So prayer has to do. But I think prayer is powerful. So I pray every day. I'm not successful every day. <laughs> Sometimes I read their prayer and I walk out the door and I think, F didn't I just pray? What's up, Doreen? It's Amelia's 50th birthday. She takes the day off from her job as a waitress to celebrate. much of a respect for my mom before I got pregnant with Anthony. And when I got pregnant, I realized that it never was personal, that she was never trying to hurt me. She was trying to make good choices with my best interest. Truly, she's one of my best friends. I can call her any day of the week about anything. Now, my relationship with Nicole is probably as good, if not better, than most of the women that I know that have had their children their whole lives. But I had to work my ass off to earn that respect and to earn that trust. It's over, and it's been over. She hasn't made bad choices like that in a long time. And she's been forever dealing with those consequences. I mean, she has more than dealt with those consequences of those choices from back then. So it's time for that part of her life to be gone. Just about last week, right? Friday, we got the phone call. Friday, we got a phone call from the loan officer 
and he spoke to me and he told me that um he said that we he had bad news and that we didn't get, we didn't get the loan. I was sad because we had everything planned for the 16th. We even put it on our calendar. I drew a little picture of a house up there. Um, the ch the chip program that we're in that the, we had applied for. We applied for um, has restriction. You have to make under under ninety thousand. My salary is fifty four thousand, but because I work summer school this this summer, that's a five thousand dollar bonus. So that's what pushed my salary up. I and mean, this year I can't work summer school because you can only work oh so many. I got relieved. I mean, I, not that I got relieved. I just didn't. I mean, the whole time I knew it was fifty fifty. That's just me though. I uh, think Jose negative. Jose's a negative Nancy think, to begin with. So I think. I think realist. I'm a realist. I think. I just want to live what everybody else lives. It's a typical American dream. That's why my parents came here. You know, I didn't drink before 21. I didn't end up pregnant at teenage years like my counterparts did. I did everything right. I did everything right. I work, I work, I work. It's still like there's no way out. This house is a way out. It's gonna be the easiest move anybody's ever seen. Because everything's organized. <laughs> Excuse me, everything's ready to go. Symbolically, today means a lot to me. Thank you. To start all over again. We've been through a lot as far as I live with my mom. Five months after a burglary forced DJ's family to live with his mother, they moved to an apartment of their own. Bye bye. Come on, pay, are y'all paying attention? Two, three, go. Bye bye. They're moving to the Chicago neighborhood of Garfield Park, one of the most economically depressed areas in the country. best neighborhood in the world, but it's not too dangerous. I mean, it's dangerous everywhere you go, but um, we can handle it. This neighborhood, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. It suck, but I grew up in this neighborhood. We got a lot, of, a lot of friends around here, a lot of family. I'm not pretty much worried about it. You just gotta deal with it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> someone broke into our home. I didn't even care about the TVs. I didn't care about the shoes they took. You know, if you want to take something away from the adults, go right ahead, trash my place. But for my little ones, that's where the blow came. And it took the security away from my kids. And now I have to show them again, this is home. This is safe. It's a fresh start. You got to tilt it too high, Joe. I definitely have a lot on my mind as far as trying to get a better job. I'm staying positive throughout the whole process. As soon as I start thinking negative, I'm going to shut down. My girlfriend may say, OK, I'm all right. It's OK. But meanwhile, she's panicking, you know? And I, you know, I can't show her that I'm panicking either, you know? And a lot of times, I do. I panic a lot, but I can't show her that. So. I'm bringing home 750 to 780 for two weeks. 780 times two. 
and then she's bringing her home 600, 650. If everything goes well, we're good at 650, but you know, mishaps with the kids, then back down to 550. So $2,860 is roughly what the month income is. Then 550 for the rent, you're left with $2,310. Then you got your gas bill, and after that, you have food. That's 350 for the month. The phone is uh, transportation, $200. Light bill is 150 to 175. $200. Gas bill, not really sure. The cable is daycare, 130. $163 a month. One thing I forgot about is school. I owe St. Mary's of Minnesota. So I have to give them for the month $200. They just think that you have this money sitting here. They did send it to collection, so I'm paying somebody in California right now. Trust me, I want to give you money so bad so I can finish off my degree. And then when I get sinus infections, medicines, my entire face swells up. 153 Not times four. Including copay uniforms, definitely terrible. <laughs> School shirts, that's where we spend our money. So I'm down to 279 Hair expenses. And then I have, oh yeah, the dog food. Because my little girl in these birds, oh my god. I'm down to 100 $100 and uh, 70, or $179. And that's what I'm down to. Next time on Hard Earned. One time I was working and my patron asked me, what do you think about the manager? Me? Jose told me, let's just get married. It was a big purchase. If you don't have that much money to spend, it kind of, it dampers the mood a little bit. $15 an hour! $15 an hour! I went back to work, it was exactly what I expected. A lot of tension. I know that I'm watched. We cannot afford for one of us to lose a job. <laughs>